Hi Nancy, I hope you had a wonderful day. Uh, we are Saturday, November 18th, and uh, this is American Headway. So the last time, you know, we went through different things, you know, we went through the the story of James Bond. That's not the last James Bond. The last uh, James Bond, I think, is Russian. He has blue eyes with blonde hair. Uh, he's always been this kind of a British guy, you know, British looking guy, but they try to change with the last James Bond to be a tiny bit more, uh, you know, to be elegant as well, but from a different country, so with a different nationality. Okay, so what I recommend you do is to, you know, uh, you know, in the last video, I know I'm not really happy about it, um, you know, I I don't even remember if I did this, you know, so I'm going to just go through these different questions to make sure everything is understood. Um, this is done, but I'm going to go through the exercise number three, making negatives, okay? So here we need to know if it's true or false. James Bond felt happy to be back in his hotel room. Well, uh, we can guess he's tired, he wants to go to sleep. So, but he was not really happy, he was a bit frustrated. Um, you know, the thing is, he got back in order to relax, but there is somebody uh, behind the curtains, uh, behind the window, trying to get in. So he cannot really rest, the poor James Bond. So feel happy, you know, it's not really noticeable. Uh, he got back to, to his hotel room at midnight. The windows were closed and the air conditioner was on. Bond switched it off, switched it off and opened the windows. His heart was still thumping in his chest. He, So we don't have any indication. So we can say false. Bond was dreaming about Mary Goodnight. No, he was dreaming about three guys with red eyes. The black-coated man, so not really a happy, a happy dream. A man with a gun walk. Bond at 3.30 a.m. No, he heard the sound from the window. He was very pleased to see Mary Goodnight. No, he was very surprised. Bond fired his gun while he was pulling Mary through the window. That's false. Then talked while the shower was running. Yes, because he didn't want to... He doesn't know if uh, there are any microphones or any box, many people listening to their conversation. Maybe also an important conversation, which was the case. Uh, Bond knew that Hendrix was looking for him. That's true. And James helped Mary get out of the hotel. Uh, okay. Okay, boys. To the door and turn on the lights. So... Uh, they are facing Scaramanga, so they're not go, uh, going out. Uh, James helped Mary to get out of the from the window. I mean, she was she was trying to get in, so she, he helped her out. Uh, well, he helped her to get inside the hotel room, and but to leave the hotel, no, not yet. What was James Bond doing before he got back to the to his hotel room? So we didn't go through that, but we went through this, you know, so get, got, etc. So you did a very good job with the past uh, tenses, black. What's uh, What do these colors refer to in the story? Black, the black-coated man, white, uh, that was somewhere here, angry, white, white teeth, uh, red, their red eyes. And golden, the golden gun. Okay. And the exercise number three, making negatives. We can make ne adjectives and verbs negative by using these prefixes. Un. So necessary, unnecessary. Im. Okay, so. Impossible, possible, impossible. Okay. In. Ill. And consent. So this, if you add this. To an adjective, you can have the opposite, the negative, the contrary. And if you add on this, dislike, 
to a verb, you also have the, the opposite meaning. So let's see. Complete the sentences using a word from the box and a prefix. Okay. So we have pack, possible, agree, lock, fair, like, appear, employed, legal, polite. So she's trying to open a room, hotel room, door. The She's still using a key. Now you can just use a card. So this key doesn't work. I can't unlock the door. I can't do math. For me, it's um, an impossible subject. Possible? Impossible. I don't... Uh, I don't like. I don't dislike. That would be the opposite. So like, dislike. Fair, unfair. Lock, unlock. Agree, disagree. Possible, impossible. Pack, unpack. Appear, disappear. So you see, yeah, we have un or dis. Unpack, disappear. Employed, unemployed. Legal, so here we have an adjective. Illegal, legal, illegal. Polite, impolite. Okay? So, I can't do math for me. It's an impossible subject. I don't dislike, I don't dislike fish. I just prefer meat. It is very... Uh, to ask someone how much they make. Impolite, it's very impolite to ask someone how much they make. When we arrived at the hotel, we uh, we unpacked we unpacked our suitcases. I was something for two years finally I got a job. So I was unemployed for two years, so that finally I got a job. I think learning languages is stupid. I think it's a good idea. I disagree. So we have here uh, agree and the opposite is disagree. So I disagree. I think it's a good idea. The thief stole my bag, ran into the crowd and something. I never saw him. So I disappeared. I never saw him again. It something to drive a car without a driver's license. It's illegal, again, huh? illegal, not legal, to drive a car without a driver's license. You gave her more money than me. That's uh, unfair. Fair is just, and the opposite, unfair. Okay. Next, we did everyday English time expressions. All we have to remember here is, you know, when we when we see the time like that, we can just simplify because of the digital time, the cell phones, the tablets. Um, you know, we live in a in a world where everything is simplified. Like for instance, the time. It is nine thirty eight a.m. or p.m. It is one twenty seven a.m. or p.m. So here you see. 29th February 2000 okay but in American English we're gonna just say February 29th 2000 okay so in American English we have the month the day and the year so the month was January uh, 8th 1998 July 16 1985 November 25th no, I cannot really read what's going on here. So you understand we have the month, the day, and the year. Okay. June 19th, August 5th, July 4th, March 1st, February 3rd, etc. So what we do is June 11th, 1965, October 18th, 2000, January 31st, 2005. Okay. So, uh... Okay, more important here, at 6 o'clock, last night, on Monday morning, in the evening, on Saturday, in December, etc. So we just need some propositions, but it's very, very easy here. Okay, so 
Okay, and here we have some. Uh, we I know we did that as well. We started. We have some kind of an exercise with. Uh, when did you last go to the movies? Uh, I the last time I went to the movies it was for watching Coco. It's a Spanish movie with my daughter, my husband. Uh, maybe three weeks ago, I guess a month ago. When did you last play a sport? Unfortunately, I don't really have time for that. So my sport is walking, I guess. I walk a lot. Uh, when did you last time give someone a present? Uh, yesterday, my daughter <laughs> we went to the supermarket and I got her some potty pocket. It's like a small toy. Um, you know, she was happy, but she she tends to forget that she just got a new toy and she wants a new one. So I have to... You know, to slow down on this level. Um, when did you last take a vacation? <laughs> um, it was November second. I just I just took a, a a day off. I had a day off. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't, didn't take a week off, just a day off because I my husband is Mexican, so we went to um, Mexico City just for a day. We left uh, the night before. We stayed uh, uh, Thursday, and we we got back Thursday evening. So it was uh, uh, it was an experience, uh, very short experience, but you know, yeah. November second. When did you when did you last watch TV? Ooh, I don't watch TV. I uh. I watch some movies on my computer. I do. I learn stuff. I'm taking. Uh, I like. I like Udemy. It's. I really love this platform because I can learn a lot of stuff. So, I. I got some. I. You know. I. I bought some. Uh, some courses on Udemy, and it was just a few bucks. And uh, so I studied that at night. <laughs> I never. I never take a break. Uh, when did you last time go to a party? I don't remember. When did you t last time take a test? Um, I don't remember, but I think it was for uh, consultant uh, stuff. I I had to take a test for that uh, because I love learning, so I like to certify, I like to add more stuff in my uh, resume. When did you last time see a lot of snow? Ooh. It was in 2000... 14, 14, I guess, uh, I was in, I was, at the time, it was my last year in Canada, I was living in Alberta, and you can imagine, the Canadian, uh, Canadian winters can be very intense, so I believe that was the last time. When did you last time, uh, when did you last brush your teeth? Well, uh, not too long ago. <laughs> and when did you last take a plane trip? That was last year. Um, well, no, no, not last year. What am I talking about? November second, when we took the the plane to go to Mexico, and before that, it was last year when we went to France to uh, to stay there to come back. Actually, we came back uh, last year in uh, August, end of August, early September. So there we go. Let's go shopping. So we need to study much, many, some, any, a few, a little, a lot of, and we'll see different vocabularies. So the thing is in in English, well, you have what we, you know, we have the the countable, and you know, you you have different, how can I say, different products where you can not count. Uh, you know, let's say for instance, the rice. Well. Good luck on counting the rice, it's not really countable. And the butter, you know, uh, you can just count with uh, in terms of packages, uh, containers, potatoes, we can just say a kilo, a pound, eggs, a dozen, six, we can count, milk, <coughs> sorry, that would be, a, you know, a bottle or something, frozen pizzas, you know, boxes, etc. So let's see the dialogue here. It says here milk. How much milk do you do we need? Two liters. And eggs. How many eggs? A dozen. 
And what about potatoes? How many potatoes? A kilo is enough. Pam. And butter? How much? Just one package. Cool. Can we count butter? Can we count eggs? One egg, two eggs, etc. So when do we say how much? So how much butter do you need? Huh? We can say that. And uh, how many eggs? Because we can count. So here we have to match these quanti quantifiers with the item from the shopping list. So we can see just one loaf of bread. Tomatoes, we can just see uh, uh, four or five big ones, I guess. Uh, cheese. Cheese, cheese, cheese. 200 grams of cheddar. Soda, three bottles. Frozen pizzas. Um... One pepperoni, one plain, jam, a jar, potato chips, a bag. Okay. And, 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 we're going to have to go through all this stuff just to make sure much and many are understood. Okay. So here we have the shopping list, the milk, eggs, potatoes, butter, bread, tomatoes, cheese, soda, frozen pizzas, jam, and potato chips. Okay. And uh, next time, we'll go through the grammar and different exercises like read and listen to the rest of Sarah and Vicky's conversation. Do we need anything else? Let's see. We have some apples, but there aren't any grapes. And there isn't any coffee, but we have some tea. Is there any orange juice left? Or did somebody finish it? There's a little, but there isn't much, so we need some more. And vegetables. Do we have many vegetables? Well, I see a lot of carrots, but they aren't many option. Um, but they aren't many onions. Don't forget, we need a lot of potato chips and soda. My new fuse are coming tomorrow. Okay, I think that's everything. Let's go. By the way, how much money do you have? Can I borrow some? Okay, so we'll go through this stuff. Um, let me get back to. This, I guess, that's not this one. This is a book, you know, I, I use, but illustrations are not great. So in the future, we can use that. There is a volume one and there is a volume two. So for for the time being, uh, you know, we, we don't need this kind of stuff. We can also use that in the near future when we are done with American Edwards. I just want to show you a, a sample, but it's... I don't like the layout. You know, this book is okay, but, uh, you know, we can go through different stories, like what's your full, the full name, uh, how do you spell that, who chose your name, why, it's, you know, it's not really important. When did you decide to move to the U.S., why, how long have you been in the United States? You can have people who are very curious, they can ask you a lot of questions like that, but I think it's part of a... Uh, if people move to America, there is an idea of, you know, they don't want to be bothered. They don't want to, to, to be investigated. They don't want people to ask them too many questions. Um, when I went to Canada, uh, I remember my husband, uh, you know, he was working with one colleague and his wife, I believe, was working for the immigration. She was invited over once um, my daughter was still still young, very, she was still a baby, and uh, she kept just asking me questions, you know, non-stop, I'm like, look, I'm exhausted, I barely have any sleep, my daughter, you know, she's uh, teething, she's uh, still a baby, um, I came here just to, to be left alone, because my husband had like a two-year contract in Canada, so we moved there, and and she kept asking questions over and over again, and I was really polite, I answered, but at, in the end I was just like, I'm sorry, but I have to head back to my daughter and take care of her. Um, and she was pregnant also, at the, I mean, she was pregnant at the time and she was smoking. So, you know, not very bright, not very interesting and, uh, you know, these kind of people were uh, just annoying <laughs> and she was very annoying, so, yeah. Uh, if you have people asking too many questions, you can you have the right to say, uh, you know, in a very polite way, you can just tell them, look, uh, I have to go. I, I'm sorry, but I have to uh, 
to keep it short, I have to go back to work, or I have to pick up my daughter, you know, this kind of stuff, you can always find an excuse, and they, if they are very pushy, you can just be like, look, I really don't have time for that, uh, maybe another time, but for the time being, I'm, you know, you can be a tiny bit more, um, you know, honest, but most of the time, it's more appreciable, I mean, it's more, you know, it's more, not necessarily respected, but, uh, it's understood, uh, you know, if you want to stop a conversation, you just explain why. It doesn't have to be true, but look, I have to go because I have to go back to work or I have things I have to finish at home. Just, you know, it's fine. Uh, don't be too pushy, you know. If I mean, if I don't have time and people are very, you know, they are trying to waste my time, I can be pushy. Uh, look, I have m I have other things to do because my priority is my daughter, you know, or my work. And sorry, you are not my priority right now. <laughs> That's uh, a way to you know to put some serious boundaries, and I can do that. There's no problem. But anyway, so there's a lot of vocabulary, a lot of stuff. So we can go through different questions if you want. And uh, but for the time being, I want just to. Uh, Yes, that's uh, this one. That's a book I was using, but I don't want you to download it. Okay, you've downloaded a lot of books so far, and uh, I think uh, you don't need to, you know, to download it anymore. Uh, just look at my videos, and you're gonna, you know, you just need one or two new expressions every time we have a course. So don't worry about that. Okay, don't download anything. So we already did that. After all, again and again, agree with all of a sudden all over the world, okay, everywhere, throughout the world, worldwide, everywhere, okay, all of, a, all of a sudden, it's like suddenly, okay, without warning, all the time, constantly, always, is tired all the time, you can't say that to me every time I make the, the recordings, I yawn, and I'm tired, but it's not always the case, during the day, I'm not like that, so by the end of the day, yeah, I can be very tired, all the way, the whole distance, the whole way, the car broke down and we had to walk all the way home. So we broke down here and the, the and home is right behind the mountain, so we had to walk all the way home. Okay, Sue was like, she ran all the way to school. Can you run all the way th around the soccer field? No, I can't. I can only run halfway, uh, halfway around it then. I'm too tired to keep running all the way. And so on and so forth and the like and the like no and so forth. Potatoes, onions, carrots and so on are vegetables. There are many countries in Africa, Zambia, Kenya, Togo and so on. What do you what do you feed your pet snake? Small animals like mice frogs, lizards, and so on. It's like etc. To arrive at and to arrive in. Get to, come to, rich. Make sure you arrive at the house before six. They arrived at the restaurant. The, ra the train arrived at the, the station. When will we get to the airport? We should arrive at the airport in five minutes. Okay, it was to get to, to arrive uh, in a place. As a result, so consequently, he ate too much. As a result, he got fat. She studied hard. As a result, she got an A on the test. Many roads were flooded. And as a result, there were some delays. Did you study for the test? No. And as a result, I got a bad grade. As well. So we're going to continue that for the next time. And the second, I thought it was already open. Yeah, we already did that as well. You know, there are some exercises, but you know, we need to concentrate on or to focus on to get along with someone. It's like to have a, you know, um, you you feel very friendly with someone. You you have a good relationship with someone. To have a point said when you agree with someone's opinion. Ah, well, you get a point. My sister said that I need to spend more time with my family. She has a point. Some people can say she, she's got a point. That, that girl only seems stuck up because she's shy. You have a point there. 
a blue shirt look looks better but it's more expensive you have a point well you know uh, you can just uh, agree with someone you know uh, you realize someone you know is saying something true so you can uh, you know look uh, don't you know don't uh, don't study this discipline in college because you're not gonna find a job a job yeah you, you, you've got a point or you had a point I agree with you okay basically it means I agree with you more often than not usually more often than not he spent his holidays with his parents she works late more often than not so she usually works late it's not very common I would say you can read it more than hearing it you know the most common expression would be you know usually that's it it's not uh, you know time to time you can read this expression but hearing it I would say maybe not and never mind to take a look at and to turn out that's the I think the, there were the three remaining expressions, so never mind, forget about it, pay no attention to it, never mind the car's color, so don't pay attention to the car, the, the color's car, um, it turns great. Didn't you wash the dishes yet? Never mind, I'll do them myself. Well, you know, imagine you talk to someone and for you explain something to someone for for about five minutes and the person is like um, I, I'm sorry what did you say and you're like man I just talked for the past five minutes and you were not paying attention so I'm not gonna repeat everything I just said so well, I'm sorry but never mind yeah never mind too bad forget about it I'm not gonna repeat that again okay sorry we don't have leather bags never mind I'll look in another store to take a look at to look at to evaluate the doctor took a look at her foot to see if it was broken please take a look at my essay and let me know what you think of it something's wrong with a car I'll take a look at it after lunch okay so to take a look at something to evaluate and the last expression to turn out finally be end up the weather looked bad this morning, but it turned out to be a nice day. He tried to cook a special dinner for his girlfriend, but it didn't turn out well. End up. It didn't end up being a good idea or to, to, to be a good dish or to be a good party or a good relationship, whatever. Good luck with your new project. Thanks. I'll let you know how it turns out. Turn out to be a sunny day. So imagine uh, the you know the beginning of the day is very you know it's uh, it's not very good you know the weather can be very bad and it's raining it's cold and you are in a bad mood and you're like ah oh, it's gonna be a bad day okay I can feel it well it turned out to be a very good day because you won the lottery uh, everything went well you know you you know you you met new people and you feel happy so beginning of the day is very bad but after you know the day is getting better so it turned out to be a very good day okay so or it turned out to be a very good day so this is done with the American headway uh, the different expressions we also did Longman so I need uh, sorry about that but I didn't open it Longman uh, the grammar book <clears throat> So we did an exercise, we explained more things about uh, the past progressive, so let me just open it. What I'm going to do is go to page 22 to give you five more um, verbs, because I forgot to do that the last time. Where's 22? No, it's not here. It's here. 22. So five more verbs. And I remember, so we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. Great. Uh, I think uh, we did also bring, broadcast, build, burn, and burst. Let's start with buy. Buy, cast, catch, choose, uh, clung, clung, clung come okay so let's do five more buy bolt bolt cast 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 k 
catch, caught, caught, choose, chose, chosen, cling, clung, clung, come, came, come. And let's do one more. Coast, coast, coast. It cost, cost. Creep, crept, crept. We saw this one. Cut, cut, cut. Deal, dealt, dealt. Dig, dug, dug. Do, did, done. Draw, drew, drawn. And dream. Well, we have both. Dreamed and dreamt. Dreamt would be more like British, but it's used. Both are used in American English. I've dreamt. I've dreamt. It's fine. Both are fine. Eat, at, eaten. Fall, fell, fallen. Feed, fed, fed. Okay, let's stop with feel. Feel, felt, felt. Okay? So you have a lot of verbs. And let me just open uh, Skype. That's uh, Carrie. You know, uh, I'm a little girl. I'm giving French classes too. And uh, Nancy. See, I have a lot of students. There we go. So, uh, because sometimes I write. That was from Friday. I think we used the uh, what's the name, Google Hangouts. That's why. So sorry about this stuff. That uh, this is a French movie. Uh, I have to uh, to comment on it for a student who's gonna be her last year of French, uh, last few months actually, because she's gonna prepare uh, to go to university next year. So. Let me just open Gmail, okay, and uh, what can I do? This is my personal email. So, uh, yeah, because I think I couldn't hear you, and so we decided to use, to use, to use Google Hangout, and this is the one. So Nancy, you're here as well. And because the last thing we had on Skype was for last uh, Wednesday, and we had a course on uh, what's the name on Friday. So okay, okay, I'm here. Do you have a point? I agree with you. You have a point. You're right. More often than not. So we did that. So don't pay attention to the time on my computer because everything is off. Uh, I adapt to different uh, time schedules, so I just uh, trust my cell phone. That's uh, the only uh, the only device I trust. Well, my computer, my my also my tablet. I I don't really pay attention to the time. I'm just uh, I'm gonna adapt to the Chinese time. Or the European time. I have some students in Zurich. Um, uh, also Brazil, but most of my Brazilian students, you know, they decided to move to America or to Canada uh, for a better life, and they all moved. So everything is done with them. But you know, most of the time I give different classes uh, to different people from different countries. So I, you know, that my computer, my laptop is. Uh, is messed up because you know I have this time schedule of different different countries. So, anyways, you're right. More often than not, it rains more often than not this time of year. So it means usually, it usually rains this time of year. Never mind, uh, forget about it. You know, too bad. Uh, I'm not gonna repeat uh, what I just talked about for the past five minutes. Um, to take a look at something, you know, to evaluate something wrong with the car, I'll take a look at it to turn out, ended up to finally be the weather looked bad this morning, but it turned out to be a nice day so we have some expectations, you know, and uh, it ended up to be a different conclusion so let's say I was waiting for UPS to deliver a package, but it turned out to be my daughter Okay, so page 31 and page 34, I believe it was, 
Yeah, so that's before. See that? So okay. I'm just making sure I'm not skipping anything. Okay. Uh, so we finished with the past progressive. I'm not gonna bother you with that anymore. But we started a new chapter. Here we go. Just 34 and 35. Okay. The perfect, present perfect, present perfect progressive, the past perfect, and the past perfect progressive. We have already some exercises, but we don't need that. We need to explain what's going on. So starting with the present perfect, we have you know three big ideas we need to focus on. Well, what is a present perfect? It expresses the idea that something happened in the past, before now, but the most important is you know they have moved. We have have or has plus a past participle. Regular verbs we just add ed and irregular verbs we know we need to learn the list. Okay. So, past action, but we don't know when. It's not specified and it's not important. Every time you use a present perfect here, without any prepositions, you know, particular prepositions, we can just be like, okay, um, we don't specify the time, we can just say like once, twice, never, and it's okay, we can use a present perfect. So, the exact time it happened is not very important, if there is a specific mention of time, the simple past is used. So if I specify last month, last year, um, you know, uh, at three o'clock, I'm gonna use a simple past. Instead of saying like, uh, they have moved into a new apartment, they moved into a new apartment last month. Have you ever visited Mexico? I have never seen snow. I have already seen the movie. Jack hasn't seen it yet. And started a letter to her parents last week, but she still hasn't finished it. Alex feels bad, he has just heard from some bad news. So, the adverbs ever, never, already, yet, still, it's here, and just, he has just, are frequently used with the present perfect. So remember this list, ever, never, already, yet, still, just. What you can do in order to remember this list, you can just start with the E, N, A, Y, -Y S, J. And make a, you can make a story, you can make, you know, but I don't think it's difficult to remember this list. You know. um, ever, never, ever, never, already, yet, still, and just. If you add a rhyme, if you sing it, it would be better too, easier to remember. Anyways, so now, we can also express a repetitive action, not in the sense of it's an ongoing action, like a past progressive, but it's something repetitive, an activity that was repeated, you know, uh, what they say here, the present perfect also expresses a repetition of an activity before now, past, okay, in the past. The exact time of each ex repetition is not important. Again, we don't specify when exactly. Okay, so we can just say so far is also frequently used with the present perfect. So we have another word. So far, in addition to ever, never, already, still, yet, and just. So far, we have had four tests so far this semester. I have written my wife a letter every other day for the last two weeks. I have met many people since I came here in June. I have flown on an airplane many times. Okay, so repetitive action. We have we've got you know we we've had four tests you know so one after another one another one another one so far this semester. So to write a uh, to to his wife on a repetitive level, so we can understand the repetition. I have met many people since I came here in June, yeah, so repetitive action, you meet a lot of people, and have flown on an airplane many times, not the first time, not just twice, many times, okay, so it's repetitive. After the present perfect, when used with for and since, and since also expresses a situation 
that began in the past and continues to the present. Remember that. Began in the past and continues to the present. So every time you're going to see since and for, just think about the present perfect. Okay? Don't think about the, the simple past. Never. So, I have been here since 7 o'clock. So we specify the time here. The thing is, uh, the difference is the action can continue in the present. Okay? So I have been here since 7 o'clock. We've been here for two weeks. I've had this same pair of shoes for three years. I have liked cowboy movies even since I was a child. I have known him for many years. So, in the example, notice the difference between since and for. Since plus a particular time. Since uh, 1995. Uh, and for a duration of time for three years or ten years for two months. Etc. And now we have the exercise present perfect versus simple past. I haven't attended any parties since I came here. Uh, so we need to pay attention to since, you know, what do we have here? Um, don't have anything to a party last Saturday night. I went to a party at Sally's apartment last Saturday night. We specify the time. Uh, Bill, uh, Bill arrived here three days ago so it's been here since the uh, 22nd try not to be absent from class again for the rest of the term so you have already missed too many classes and you missed two classes last week just last week just you have missed you have missed two classes just last week because there is just here so far, so far, this week, I have had two tests and a quiz. Alex is an artist. He's, you know, we can also see Drew. He well, drew many pictures in his lifetime, but he's drawn many people, many pictures in his lifetime. And last week, he drew a beautiful mountain piece. So we're gonna have a past, um, present past here. Jack really needs to get in touch with you since this morning. It's a repetitive action, but we don't have since or for. Uh, he's called here four times trying to reach you. He, So we have repetitive action as well, huh? uh, but we are very specific with the time. He called at 9.10, 10.25, 12.15, and 1.45. Okay. Janet wore her new blue dress since only only once since she she bought it. So we have she has worn her new blue dress only once since she bought it. She wore it to her brother's wedding wedding last month. The night has ended and it's daylight night daylight now. The night has ended and it's daylight now. The sun. That's something you know you need to be careful also with the. Um, how can I say? Um, uh, the list. You know, you can go back and forth with page 22 in order to be like, okay, well, uh, you know, rose uh, has risen. Okay. So that's something we need to you need to go back and forth with the, the list. I'm not gonna go do that now, but it's just like oh, how can I use I know it's an irregular verb, but how can I know the, the, the past participle of this verb? Uh okay, so the so sun rose uh, has risen and it rose at six oh eight. Last January I saw snow for the first time in my life. Fatima has never seen snow here her entire lifetime. I have known Greg Adams for 10 years. Is Hamad yet here yet? Yes, he has just arrived. He has just arrived. He's just arrived. And the last part, yet, he hasn't been able to reach Mr. Chang yet. So far, he. 
respond to any of my attempts to reach him. So far, yes, yeah, so far. He hasn't responded to any of my attempts to reach him. Oh. Uh. I started trying to reach him three days ago. Since then, I, ha I have faxed him twice. I... Can say I have phoned him four times, but I prefer to say I have called him four times. And I have sent him, I have sent at least six emails. I guess modern communications don't mean much if there's no one at the other end. Okay, so Nancy, let's stop here. You have a lot of things to work on. You have a beautiful weekend. It's already Saturday night. I'm not partying, I'm working, uh, and uh, I'll see you on Monday. I saw your schedule, I just need to confirm it, uh, everything should be fine. Um, I'm going to just send me send you an email to you know to be polite and confer, confirm the, the schedule. Um, concerning the end of the month, you're going to get a free... Uh, free lesson because yet yeah, it's not it's part of my deal I do that with some people not everyone because I have a lot of students are a bit lazy and I don't want to reward them I don't want to re reward their laziness so since I have a lot of good uh, disciplined students I like to give them free stuff um, but you know you have to be you have to deserve it and you deserve you deserve to have a free course and to get a lot of, uh, you know, fires from me. Let's stop here. You have a good night, a good weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. Take care, Nancy. Bye-bye.